he had this charm about him. And like I say, you know, you, you, you see him on stage and you think that this guy is this raucous, wild Irishman. And then we sit down and talk, well, he's like, he's soft-spoken, he's gentle, he's got a great sense of humour, and he's a total opposite. There was a lot of sides to the man, and there was a very soft side to him as well. And there was also a very dark side. You wouldn't want to piss him off. He had a pretty hard time in school, you know, because it's obvious he was just stood out completely. You know, he was slag, the little black boy, and I think it was character building in a way for him as well, because it made him that bit more determined. You know, when, you, when you're different, it's always difficult. Phil figured out you have to become a chameleon, really, to survive. He said to me one day, Oh, my wait till I tell you, he said, you know when I used to go to school at the Christian Brothers, they used to give me a money box to go and collect for the black babies, because I was a black baby. <laughs> God forgive me, I'm telling you tales now. He decided he was going to be a certain type of Irishman. He was going to be the world's first black Irishman, and he made a point of being black and Irish. I was having a discussion with somebody um, about the band and Philip, and they said he's a black guy, and this fellow said, no, no, he's not black, he's Irish. What I loved was walking into a room with him because, I mean, he, he walked into the room, the whole place came alive. It wasn't because I walked into the room. <laughs> you only had to look at him, really, and you could see he's a rock star. But he had a hunger to want everybody to know him. Philip just summed it up. He said, uh, I want to be rich and famous. <laughs>